Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation, maybe a non-standard or transcendental equation. Because the right-hand side is exponential, but the left-hand side is kind of like a power function. I can say polynomial because square root of 3 is not a non-negative integer. So, we have this weird scenario where x to the power root 3 equals root 3 to the power x. And we could probably generalize this equation. Anyways, let's see how we can solve an equation like this. You're probably guessing at this point, okay, I already got the solution in 5 seconds with my eyes closed. Okay, let's find out how many solutions there are. Is that the only solution? So on and so forth. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and write this expression as x to the power root 3 and the right hand side as 3 to the power 1 half to the power x because you can express square root of 3 as 3 to the power 1 half, right? And then from here we can multiply the exponents that gives us x to the power root 3 equals 3 to the power x over 2. Great. Now the next thing that I like to do is get rid of the fraction so why don't we square both sides? Obviously, squaring both sides could be a little dangerous because you might be introducing some extraneous solutions which you need to check at the end. When you square both sides, the twos are going to cancel out and we're going to end up with something like this. x to the power 2 root 3 equals 3 to the power x. Well, it looks a little nicer than the original, doesn't it? Maybe. Who knows? Uh, but we don't have that symmetry anymore, right? We had, we had some type of symmetry where the base and the exponent switch around. But in this case, we don't have that, right? So I, I was just thinking maybe at this point, we could go ahead and use Lambert's W function. Can we? Is it possible? Let's try to get the x's on the same side. Oh, maybe we can try this. I can go ahead and keep the x where it is and multiply both sides by 3 to the power negative x, which is going to give me 1 on the right-hand side. Okay, so that looks good. And we can easily turn this into uh, x to the power 2 root 3. Can we? That's a good question. Maybe uh, we, can, we can start by doing this first. Replace 3 with e to the power ln 3. That's going to give us x to the power 2 root 3 times e to the power negative x ln 3. And of course, that's just one because I replaced three with that. Now, here's what I'm thinking. I think we need a single x here. So we're going to raise both sides to the power one over two root three. Let's move this a little bit this way so we can do it. Uh, we have one. And now we're going to go ahead and raise both sides to the power one over two root three. And of course, this is just going to be unchanged, right? And here the x uh, power of x is going to disappear. We're going to get x and then times e to the power negative x ln 3 divided by 2 root 3. So our goal is the following. We want to bring this to a t times e to the t form so that when we apply Lambert's W function, that can give us t, which is the inverse function for t to the t. Does that make sense? Of course, you need to talk about multiple branches. If it's real, there are two branches, so on and so forth. Notice that we got the x here, which is good, but then we have x times something else. So what we need to do next is multiply both sides by negative ln 3 over 2 root 3. So we can get the same thing, e to the power negative x ln 3 over 2 root 3. And on the right hand side, let's go ahead and erase that. Hopefully you got the idea. We're going to get negative ln 3 over 2 root 3. Great. Now I can go ahead and apply Lambert's W function. And ta-da, it just gives us the answer pretty simple, right? Well, if you apply it to this is going to be our t, e to the t, so the answer will be negative ln 3x over, by the way, that's incorrect because x needs to be separated. So let's go ahead and write it this way, times x equals w of this number. So the trick, the trickiest part here is to simplify what's inside the parentheses because all you have to do is divide by this number right here, and you'll get the x. But that's somewhat complicated. So let's go ahead and do this a little differently, but at least I kind of showed you the path. Hopefully you can take it from here. And should I call that first method? Maybe. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method now. So we have x to the power root 3 equals root 3 to the power x. And let's take it from here. We brought it to this point, x to the power 2 root 3 
equals 3 to the x. By the way, you could directly get that by squaring both sides because when you square, you can also square just the base. Make sense? That's probably a faster way to do it. I just realized. So now we have the following. And to be able to solve this problem, I'm going to go ahead and write this a little differently. So here's my goal. I'm thinking since the right hand side is a power of three, then the left hand side should also be a power of three. By power of three, I, by the way, I don't mean an integer power. It could just be any power. It could be rational or irrational. Three to the power something, makes sense? So why not replace x with something like this? Maybe x can be something like three to the power t, because t is one of my favorite variables, also one of my favorite drinks. So now we can go ahead and do that on both sides. Three to the t replaces x to the power two root three, and then three to the power x, which is three to the power t. Nice. So we're gonna go ahead and now multiply these exponents. That's gonna give us three to the power two root three t equals three to the power three to the power t. And from here, we get another equation, even though it doesn't necessarily super simplify, but at least we know that, okay, we now have three to the t equals two root three times t. And one of the things that's really nice about it is that root three is a power of three which is three to the power one half. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by root three to get rid of the irrationality on the right-hand side and put it on the left-hand side. Now root three, as you know, can be written as three to the power one half. So now I have three to the power t divided by three to the power one half equals two t, or not two t. If you're a tutor, then you have two t's, right? Anyways, two b didn't work in this case, so it's two t. And now we can subtract the exponents, three to the power t minus one half equals two t. And I know what you're thinking. Did you really make it better or did you make it worse? <laughs> Probably made it worse a little bit, but things need to get worse before they can get better, right? Something that you, we should always remember because sometimes we lose hope, don't we? I mean, like we could be in a difficult situation and everybody can be in a difficult situation. And we're like, we lose hope and then all of a sudden something good happens. But Sometimes you need to be patient. Anyways, I hope you're not in a bad you're not in a bad situation, and I hope it improves. So here's what I'm thinking: the next level of thinking. I want something rational, but we have uh, if you have a rational number, let's say t is a rational number. Just imagine if t is rational, two times t is gonna be rational. But on the left hand side, depending on what t is. I could get an irrational answer. For example, if t is 1, I get 3 to the power 1 half, which is root 3. Uh-oh, that's not rational. How do you make the left-hand side rational? How do you rationalize it? Easy. You just replace t with something plus 1 half. Does that make sense? In other words, t can be something like n plus 1 half. Or you can set t minus 1 half equal to an integer n. In this case, I want n to be an integer. Not just rational, I want it to be an integer. Maybe it's irrational, who knows? So let's just call that, I want it to be rational. Anyways, I don't know. We'll see what happens. If t minus 1 half is n, this is going to be 3 to the power n. And t is going to be n plus 1 half. So let's do the replacements. And ta-da! This is going to give us a beautiful equation. Guess what? It is super duper easy to solve after so many transformations. Yes, you know how to solve this, right? Come on. N equals 1. Doesn't it scream like N equals 1? Yeah, N equals 1. So, because 3 equals 3, right? Obviously, that makes sense, doesn't it? If N equals 1, then from here, T minus 1 half equals 1, which means T equals 3 halves. But what is T? T is a drink, also a variable. And X was assumed to be 3 to the power T. So since t is 3 halves, it should be 3 to the power 3 halves. Wait a minute, what is that supposed to mean? It means 3 times root 3. Is that a solution? Yes. But what about the obvious solution that I know you've been uh, knowing all along, right? It is root 3, because why? Root 3 to the power root 3 equals root 3 to the power root 3. So x equals root 3 is another solution. Maybe it's the first solution you should find. And 3 root 3 happens to be the second solution. Because if you plug it in, you're gonna realize it works. Let me show you a couple of things before we finish. First, the graph of these two functions. And notice that they intersect at two points, at root three and three root three. Why? 
that can be explained by first numerical solution from Wolfram Alpha. Thank you very much for the for these. This is root three. This is three root three. They're both solutions. You can check it out. And then tada! Checking the curvatures of these functions at root three, you realize that one of them has a bigger curvature, which kind of explains the picture here. Bigger curvature, so they will intersect at two points. Can you find the curvature on an interval? Yes, you can find the average curvature. Look it up. There are some really nice formulas. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.